guys and welcome back to my chart ruler series okay so in today's video we are going to be discussing the Taurus rising chart ruler naturally of course if you do not know what the chart ruler is within astrology then I would like to point you into the direction of my introduction to the chart ruler video go to that video watch that get more detail and then go to whatever whatever video sits you really. By having a Taurus rising or ascendant, it means that Venus is in fact your chart ruler, meaning that as you do enter into all areas of your life, you're going to be doing so through the lens that is Taurus. We're gonna start off by discussing the meaning of Venus, so what Venus really represents, and then we're going to look at the role that Venus will play in your life if you do have a Taurus rising. And then we're going to finish off by assessing how you can then interpret your Venus within your birth chart. For more information all about Venus though, then please be sure to check out my Venus in Astrology video. For the symbol of Venus, we've got the circle. So this is the circle of spirit and it's this circle that is connected to the sun. But then below the circle we have a cross. But the fact that the circle is above the cross, it represents the spirit overcoming matter through love. Now, as I've stated before in other videos, Venus is greatly about attraction and value. But Venus also attracts and draws these things together in this type of uh, synthesis, in a sort of blend, in this fusion. But most importantly, Venus draws through love because it's through love that we become conscious of others. It's through love where we can then form a union with another person. And so Venus symbolizes the feminine force, the anima in all of us. That part of us that is gentle, is cooperative, is impressionable and is affectionate. So, so far throughout this series, we've gathered then that the sun represents the spirit, our very being, right, our conscious selves, whilst the moon represents form. It represents our unconsciousness because it reflects to us our true selves. But then Mercury, Mercury represents the mind and Mercury is all to do with reason. It's these three things that creates a human being. It's Venus that likes to come along and tells us about love and about beauty and how we can then incorporate these things into our lives. Yes, we've established that we are individual. We are all individual human beings on this planet, but it's through love that we connect with others, that we relate to others, that we cooperate and we have an equal exchange with others of this give and take process. Therefore, other people on this planet should be valued. Just like we ourselves want to be valued as individuals, we also must value others. Of course, this value and this love must come from our own heart space by us learning how to love ourselves unconditionally. But we also must learn how to give ourselves, how to love other people unconditionally. And I think essentially that comes whenever we have accepted ourselves as a being, as a human, as a person, as a unique entity on this planet. <laughs> but once we do that, once we do that, we have this amazing ability to extend that love to other people. Now, you might be thinking that the moon is connected to love because I did talk about the moon in the Cancer Rising video and the moon is also feminine. It's also feminine energy just like Venus, but it's the moon that is about nurturing. It's more about nurture. See, nurture and love are not exactly the same thing. And if you think about it, mothers can smother their children through nurture. So that's more of a conditional thing. But love, love is unconditional. You can't have too much love, right? It is this wonderful planet of Venus 
that shows us the urge to balance and to harmonize and to merge. It's really to do with our ability to appreciate and to value and to love and be loved. And it's through Venus that we beautify ourselves, whether that be in our outer environment or within our own personal appearance. <laughs> but ultimately guys, it's love that shows us that we can truly live. Sure, yes, we can survive and exist in the world without love, but it's through love that we blossom and that we bloom in the world. And it's through love that we truly thrive. Now, of course, Venus rules both Taurus and Libra. Taurus being the earthy side, whilst Libra being the air side. The Taurus side is the more sensual side of Venus. It seeks to satisfy desires of the physical, instinctual nature. So actually a quick thing to note here on that is that Cancer, the sign of Cancer is, it's all about our emotional, instinctual nature, okay? Whilst Taurus is our physical, instinctual nature. See, for a Cancer rising person, it's all about the basic needs, okay? Basic emotional needs. But this is very similar to Taurus, but it's the basic physical needs. And this is the thing that these two signs have in common and also why they usually go very well together. And if you think about it, it's also why the moon is exalted within the sign of Taurus. For a Taurus rising though, it's about fulfilling these basic needs of comfort and security through the likes of food, sex, money, things that we can really indulge in, okay? But for a Cancer rising person, it's fulfilling the emotional need for comfort and security. Now with the difference here between Venus in Taurus and Venus in Libra, the Libra rising then, their sense of Venus is more idealistic. Yes. Taurus is realistic, Libra is idealistic. For a Libra rising, it's about the romantic and the aesthetic ideas of love. It's about fairness, it's about compromise and proportion. It's a lot more balanced and this is why Libra rising certainly are not as indulgent as the Taurus rising. Okay, so what role then does Venus or will Venus play in your life if you do have a Taurus rising? By having a Taurus rising, your story is about living your life in a pleasurable and pleasing way. For you, you want an easy life, but at the same time, you're willing to put in the work in order to get it. Sure, yes, there are going to be challenges, but the outcomes um, the outcome is, is nice items. The outcomes are, you know, plenty of food, warm baths, relaxing walks on Malibu Beach. For you, life is to be enjoyed as you look back on your past experiences with such ease, um, a certain calmness, stillness, with so much appreciation. You want a stable life, a secure life. A life that fulfills all of your sensual desires. And this immersion into all that heightens your five senses. I guess that's why they call it sensuality. Sex can involve sensuality. Food can involve it. Smelling a fresh flower can. Stroking a dog can. Listening to a beautiful song can. <laughs> and so your outlook on life is that of pleasure, of comfort as you like to connect with beauty all around you. Other people are going to look at you and just see such a calm and peaceful person, someone who can tolerate a lot. And so for these reasons, others are gonna feel very relaxed around you and they are going to truly enjoy being in your company. <laughs> that, that much is clear. <laughs> this is making me think about my Taurus rising friend from Berlin. Um, yeah, he is definitely a very calm person and he's liked by many. <laughs> For you, you're just going to present a very stress-free appearance about you. A person who is always up for some fun, but also um, 
up for just chilling out for the entire day. Maybe even an activity that includes both of these things could be good for you. Come to think of it, uh, whenever I visited my Taurus Rising friend in Berlin, <laughs> he wanted to go to this lake for the day and I feel like that was the little like the fun part right the fun of yeah let's go to the lake let's go out there it's a nice day but yet we just sat there and just relaxed and just chilled out and it's it's that mix it's that balance of these two things you have just really viewed life in this way and from the beginning you were probably known as the patient one <laughs> the easygoing one the one who didn't make any fuss and so you learn to engage with the world through this harmonious, uh, patient and easy approach. Growing up, you most likely felt very appreciated and loved by your parents. Now, of course, this isn't the case for all Taurus Risings, um, but yeah, for you, you most likely felt valued. And so you learned how to extend this love outward. So, so capable of giving affection because you yourself were provided with affection. You were probably also taught the importance of financial security and most importantly, personal security. And so you live your life with this attitude, really valuing both of these things and understanding your value. Furthermore, this is where Venus does become very, very stable and grounded. And this is essentially why you're going to receive love because of course Venus is all about love. You're going to receive love for just the sake of security. You might even look at love as something that makes you feel secure as like this basic need. You just want for somebody to provide you with love really. Um, it's not so much that you want people giving you so many compliments and being a sweet talker and trying to win you over all the time, but really for you it is that love is something truly, truly valuable. And furthermore, when it does come to love, you're going to show somebody you love them or that you value them. For you, actions speak louder than words. I feel like Yes, with all the earth signs, actions speak louder than words. Ultimately, it's you, Taurus Risings, who radiates such elegance and gracefulness and sensibility. It's your very grounded nature that makes you highly realistic, stable and down to earth. I actually think that this is a huge lesson that we can learn from Taurus, this whole concept of not stressing out so much in life and remaining patient in our endeavors and realizing that if it's a great opportunity for us, then it's always gonna be there tomorrow. So why rush it? So now we have established what Venus represents and the role that it plays in your life. How exactly can you then interpret your Venus placement within your birth chart? Because after all, this placement, all Venus, is going to play a very highly important role in your life. Whichever sign your Venus is in, it will tell you how you value yourself, how you value love, how you fulfill, fulfill your basic physical needs and desires, how you might seek pleasure, and how you make money. But whichever house your Venus is placed in, it will tell you where you might place value, where you believe you truly deserve love, where you might seek pleasure, where you fulfill your basic physical needs and desires, and where you can make money. Let's then look at a couple of examples. I love doing examples. Uh, on that note though, if you do have any experiences that you'd like to share, if you've got a Taurus rising or you've had any um, experiences with Taurus risings, then let us know in the comment section. So my friend from Berlin, he has a Taurus rising. He has his Venus in the sign of Libra and it's in his fifth house. What I find quite interesting about this placement is the fact that his Venus is in Libra because this is the other sign that is ruled by Venus, right? So essentially Venus um, feels good in both Taurus and Libra. For him, love is fair, love is kind, love is really making a relationship work. He is going to value love this way and he is going to value himself by valuing others. <laughs> and this is quite interesting because 
I actually met him through couch surfing. He is a host on couchsurfing.com and he's had so many people come into his home and he just allows other people to stay with him in his, in his apartment. What I am noticing here is how he is very giving. Um, he's very giving by being accommodating to other people and that's a very Venus and Libra thing. He also greatly values dancing and self-expression. I remember when he came to visit me in Belfast and we were out on a night out in Belfast just dancing the night away together and he was incredible. He's like one of the most incredible dancers. He also has a son in the fifth house by the way and we both have our son in the fifth house which I find extremely like fascinating. Two of us are then dancing and this guy goes up to uh, to my friend and says to him, oh you both dance so artistically or something like that. I can't quite remember the word he said. But he mentioned, he said this comment and my friend, my Taurus Rising friend turned and said to him Yeah, 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 we're in Cirque du Soleil and the guy believed him. The guy literally turned around and was like What? You're in Cirque du Soleil? Is it here in Belfast? And he was like, yeah, yeah. He loves to dance, he loves to move, he loves to be creative, he loves art. It's within this fifth house arena that he seeks pleasure so through the romantic affairs, through art, through music. Um, he's just told me so many stories actually of these women that he's fallen for or that he's been with. He even went across the world, he jetted off across the world to go visit one of these women. Like he's just, I feel like he's such a romantic at heart. I would also say that he fulfills his physical needs and desires when he is being creative, when he is sharing his creativity with others, when he is in beautiful surroundings around pleasant people, creative people. He's actually, um, he has a lot of friends who are musicians and he's told me of these events of these nights where he has his friends Ryan in his apartment and they're just jamming together. Like there's people on the drums, just hitting, there's people on the guitar, on the keyboard, singing. I also think that because of this, he might be attracted to creative and artistic people. And he's told me that he admires like fiery women. He also admires ideas and concepts. So whenever I was in Berlin with him, we were just forever talking about relationships and we were doing this whole name theory thing about trying to see um, the names or the letter, the first letter of names that we've attracted in our lives. Anyway, I know I just talked a lot about him, but I, yeah, I value those experiences and I just wanted to share that and I think it's a really good example for this placement. Another example though, of course, would be the likes of perhaps uh, Taurus rising uh, with Venus and Gemini in the second house. So of course Venus does rule the second house within astrology. Now with this person, they are also going to value communication just like the Venus and Libra. But unlike Libra who admires a one-on-one -on -one relationship, Venus and Geminis are a little tricky to catch. They might actually seek pleasure by talking endlessly about a potential relationship, but perhaps won't uh, be so deep about it. They might value the uh, simulation as something that is comforting to them. Perhaps their basic needs for comfort and physical security come from this, but it's from them having more of a, a highly changeable taste and also perhaps from them having the space to see friends and to spread their wings and just try new things. They might also perhaps value love that brings with it the safety and security but at the same time I feel like their partner must understand their desire to network with many different types of people and also they're going to value knowledge a lot. They're going to value um, knowledge perhaps about money and about property and about fashion and art and beauty so there's going to be a lot of variety because it's Gemini a lot of variety within all of these areas to do with the second house. It might even be a natural flirt because for them essentially it's all about having fun. They might value people and things that make them laugh. They're very curious about so many things. It provides them with pleasure. Um, they're provided with pleasure whenever they are learning. They're flexible and spontaneous when it comes to the matters of maybe how they make money. And for them, ultimately, they might find joy within the physical side of life. Okay guys, so that concludes my video on the Taurus Rising chart ruler. 
in the next video then I am going to be talking about the Libra rising chart ruler. So if you'd like to keep up to date with when that will be, then click the subscribe button if you've not yet already. Thank you so much for watching, thank you all so much for subscribing, and I will be back with another video very very soon.